Hello friends, we welcome you to a great event, a business event in India, an emotional event for all the business owners here in India at Chennai Trade Center, Tamil Nadu. It's Tamil Nadu Global Investor Meet 2019, scheduled on 23 and 24th January. And we are on the second day of the event, the validatory function, where more than 3 lakh crores MOU were signed by multinational companies all over India, located at different parts of the world, like Japan, Korea, UK, France, Germany, and USA. It was a real happening day in India because Tamil Nadu was earlier a preferred investment place and still it leads the best investment location in India for all the investors globally because of different reasons which the delegates were briefing it is a cultural business center for more than 2000 plus years and also the people in Tamil Nadu are intellectuals having a great skill sets to support all investors to grow their business multifold and as Mr. Vengaya Naidu, our Honorable Vice President of Indian Government was specifying that this is the one and only state in India where you can connect by road from anywhere to anywhere, by train anywhere to anywhere, by flight or air anywhere to anywhere and by ship anywhere to anywhere. He gave a really an emotional, motivational, enchanting support speech to all the investors and it's a great happening to all the business owners here and he assured a big return for all the investors who invest in Tamil Nadu. Please hear his speech and give your feedback on our RS Money's Your Business Talk Show. Also, I love if you can subscribe the channel with bell notification and give your comments on the box. Also, you could share this video with all your business owners who will be thrilled to hear our Honorable Vice President Thir Vengaya Naidu's speech. Now he is on his mic. Thank you. I am Manu Radhakrishnan Avargale, Amit Chair MC Sampath Avargale, Meena Vada Thurai Amit Chair Sri Jayakumar Avargale, Tamil Nadu in Thalayme Chailar Girija Vaidyanathan Avargale, Tamil Nadu in Kudutraya Thalaymacha Chailar C.K. Gnana Deshika Navargale Saint Gobin India Janadipati Marum Nirvaka Yukunar D. Santana Navargale Ford Motor Nirvaka Yukunar Mr. Michael Vendermeyer Navargale Delta Electronic Janadipati D. Hussain Chain N Delta Electronics Thailand Navargale Hyundai Motor India Nirvaka Yukunar D. Sian Sevak Kim Avargale Inre Negachiki Vandirikum Anaitu Tamil Avalangukum Vodakam Na Epaume Sudaven, Tamilam, Tamil Nadu and Manadrukum Nirukum Anavai Indu Nadakum in the Matari Talar Manadu, Nerevi Peram, Vilamil, Kalandukul, Nan Peru Magalchi, Adegirin. I really feel very, very happy whenever I come to Tamil Nadu as a Minister Adriyan, even as Vice President of the Constitutional Authority now, because I am very much impressed 
by the work culture of Tamil Nadu and Tamil Nadu people. Tamil Nadu is one of the most beautiful states in the country. It has all connectivity. You have air connectivity anywhere to anywhere. You have rail connectivity anywhere to anywhere. You have road connectivity anywhere to anywhere. You have port connectivity anywhere to anywhere. This is the only state, very important state, that way where you can reach without any problem, without the need to change or wait. So that is the advantage of Tamil Nadu. And secondly, Tamil Nadu has got the skilled manpower. Technicians, English speaking people, hard working people, it's all abundantly available in Tamil Nadu. Then you also have now technology, IT, that makes Tamil Nadu really big beauty and beauty and duty coming together becomes mighty. That's why Tamil Nadu is very attractive. I am very happy that uh, Honorable Chief Minister told me that more than 3 lakh crore investments have been promised in this Global Investors Meet. And I compliment all the investors who have come here. You invest and you get harvest also. There is no problem on that. Provided you follow the rules. You follow the rules of the game. This is a very good state and my dear friends who have come from different parts of the globe and also different parts of India, I can assure you that your investments will be very useful and also purposeful. India is on the move. Even when the global economy is slowing down, you might have seen today's newspapers. United Nations report says global economy will grow around 3%. And you go through the World Economic Forum, World Bank, ADB, report of all people, India is growing at 7.3, 7.5, 7.9 in the coming years. India on the reforms front, the Prime Minister gave a three-line advice. He said reform, perform and transform. Transform the nation. Nation Nation includes all states, including Tamil Nadu. So, Election campaign. there is every possibility that you get good returns. And then, as far as India is concerned, we believe that the entire world must prosper. Our Indian philosophy is Vasudhaika Kutubakam. The entire world is one family. That is the philosophy. Sarve Jana Sukhino Bhavantu, entire humanity should be happy and prosperous. India, once upon a time, was known as Viswa Guru, not the center for the world. India's GDP was very high before the colonial rule, but India never attacked any country because we believe in Sarve Jana Sukhino Bhavantu Vasudhaika Kutubakam. So be assured that India's growth will be helpful for the world growth and peace and harmony. That is the speciality of this country. So I extend my <coughs> greetings and good wishes to all the delegates. I would like to compliment, congratulate the Chief Minister, the Deputy Chief Minister and the Government of Tamil Nadu and all the ministers and other important functionaries of the government who are all sitting here for this achievement of a successful Global Investors Meet and I hope all the promises made they will be taken forward. I was suggesting to the Chief Minister anyhow you have a good bureaucracy, you have a good work culture, whoever is investing appoint one person who will be liaisoning with them and address their problems so that there can be single window clearance. That will really help the matters. Events like this provide an ideal platform to showcase the strength of a state 
and the myriad of opportunities that offers to investors. The growth trajectory of Indian economy is now being reshaped by youth. My dear friends, delegates from different countries who have come here for your information, India is having a demographic dividend. 65% of the Indian population is below 35 years. We are a young nation. We have an aspiration in India. We have so many schemes that are being taken up for the skill upgradation of the country. We have skills, but still, central government, state government is trying to upgrade the skills of the people so that they can really cooperate in have and operate in having better products in this country. My dear friends and brothers and sisters, we have a dynamic visionary leadership at the national and state levels that is engaged in reforming governance, <coughs> reaching higher performance benchmarks and transforming the lives of the people. There is a good cooperation between center and state governments and the philosophy is to work together as a team India, irrespective of political parties, differences of politics should be confined to elections. Other time, center, state and local bodies must cooperate together and operate together and perform together because country means all states, state means all districts. I am happy when I heard the Chief Minister saying that so and so company is going to invest in Naga Patanam. You need to reach every Patanam in Tamil Nadu so that the Tamil Nadu develops. What is required for the world, what is required for the India, what is required for the state is that the development must reach everywhere. Entire thing concentrating only in Chennai or Madurai or Coimbatore or in Gujarat or in Maharashtra, Mumbai or Hyderabad or Bangalore or Vijayawada is not good. Things should be spread so that people will get development or fruits in their own respective places. That is how the world should move, that is how India is moving. I am happy that the Tamil Nadu also is moving in the same direction. Tamil Nadu, as, a, as I was told, is already a leader in automobile, telecom, power and also the skill capacities are more. Taking advantage of the same, the state can move forward and also become one of the most uh, prosperous states and then become a happy state. Prosperous state and happy state, there are different small difference. Prosperity alone will not bring uh, happiness to the people. He should also get benefit, then only people will be happy. So making everybody happy, that should be the motto. The late Chief Minister, Purachi Tarayavi Amma Jai she used to focus on the happiness of the people. Making people happy, making common man happy, making men and women all happy. That should be the end you are. The Prime Minister also is moving in that direction. Because we want to become a strong, stable and prosperous nation which will be a happy nation. And we want to see a happy world also where there is no tension, only attention is there of everybody. That is the road map for all of us. So friends, here, yeah, today, India has always been quite receptive to new ideas. Any new idea you give, center is ready, state is ready to take the new ideas. Technologies and growth opportunities. We believe that we will belong to one big family and we must grow together by capitalizing on the competitive strength of each country. With greater infusion of capital and knowledge, the aspiration India has hitched its wagon to accelerate and <coughs> inclusive, environmentally sustainable development. I am hopeful that the confluence of investors and entrepreneurs like the Global Investors Meet 2019 will help open up new opportunities for investment and growth. Dear sisters and brothers, it is indeed heartening to note that India has been writing a captivating growth story. India of today is a land of infinite possibilities and tremendous opportunities. As you are all aware, the liberalization of the Indian economy began in the early 90s under the regime of the then Prime Minister, late P.V. Narasimha Rao, and then assisted by Dr. Manmohan Singh. 
they may belong to different parties but reforms started at the time the liberalization process further picked up momentum under the leadership of sri atal bihari vajpayee late former prime minister sri vajpayee used in a new connectivity revolution in different sectors from telecom to rural roads air connectivity rail connectivity highway connectivity rural connectivity tele connectivity television connectivity port connectivity even he brought political connectivity also sri atal bihari vajpayee that is the contribution made by that great person you will see the beautiful roads in this country are the rural roads in villages are the technical advancement that has come in the it sector our the telecom revolution in india we have more than 110 crore telephones 125 crore is the population and almost everybody is having a cell phone that is the situation and we have number of channels 1000 plus channels how many channels even to count also is difficult every day one channel is coming that's the revolution that has come in and the present prime minister sri narendra bhai modi through various measures and reforms has ensured that the fundamentals of the indian economy remains strong as it continues on the growth trajectory the reforms taken by the government in the past few years have made india the top destination for investments in the world sometime back i was minister in the government looking of urban development smart cities metro rail and also housing ambassador of ambassador used to come and they used to show interest to invest in india because they are all impressed by the growth story and they are also impressed by the economic policies they are also impressed by reforms i have the first hand knowledge of the foreign investment that is coming here in the recent past as a vice president i have been going around the globe everywhere people are very much impressed about the growth story of india the entire world focuses on india today and india today newspaper recently has acknowledged tamil nadu as one of the best performing states i was there in that function so this is the spirit with which the states are working different states though they are under i will be telling you small interesting thing which must be known to many of you it will be relevant here to recall that the former united states of america president barack obama has described sri narendra bhai modi as a reformer in chief in a profile he had written on the prime minister for the times magazine american president saying indian prime minister as reformer in chief that is the way things are happening in india the entire world is looking towards india and there has been renewed focus on the country in the past few years India achieved a GDP growth rate of 7.6% in the first half of 2018-19. The size of Indian economy is expected to touch US 10 trillion dollars by 2030. Dr. Raghuram Rajan, former Governor Reserve Bank, said recently India will become bigger than China eventually as later would slow down whereas the former would continue to grow. India will be in better position to create infrastructure in the region. This is what he is saying. Matters like demonetization, GST, GST, goods service tax is the biggest transformation of the world. I can tell you because it is going to bring a sea change. There were problems initially. Any reform for that matter, there will be initial problems, temporary pain for long term gain. That is the experience. Now. you will see in the coming days the entire world is going to take a clue from the gst experiment so that there is no pilferage there is no leakage and there is no waiting and things move in steady manner a lot of people come under the tax net everybody pay the tax and everything is going to be made online so that you need not stand in line that is going to be the line of the country of india so there is no need to stand in line you apply you will get reply that will be the that is the future that is the future there is no need to go and stand in a queue and then meet people greet people shake hand do something in between the hand there is no such need at all the aim of the government present reforms is ultimately center of state everybody want to see everything goes online is it everything goes digital for information 
250,000 villages of India, they are all going to be reached by digital optic lines. Already 130,000 villages have been covered. 250,000 villages getting optic fiber connection is going to bring a massive transformation. My dear friends, the, the thrust on road connectivity, the thrust on air connectivity, the increased connectivity, you are going to have 100 more air destinations in the coming days, 100 more already. Some of them have been started also. The infrastructure and housing for all is also another major program. Agriculture sector is facing some problems, I do admit, but the government of India, government of the state, and all political parties are focusing on agriculture structure, agriculture, and then because <coughs> agriculture is the basic culture of India, and we are all focusing on that, and we want to make agriculture is a viable, sustainable profession. That is the purpose of the latest reforms of the agriculture sector. India is home to second largest startup ecosystem in the world. Startup, stand up, make in India, skill India, digital India, green India, all these programs are all catching up. The mood of the nation is changing and the people's mindset also is changing and all these activities including Green India, Swachha Bharat. Swachha Bharat is for your body, not because of Modi. Modi is the Prime Minister, but it's for our body. If you are a healthy nation, you can become a wealthy nation. If you are a healthy nation, you can become a wealthy nation. That's why these schemes are all being taken up also. And also for ending the gender discrimination, Beti Bachao, Beti Padao, encouraging the girl child, and also educating her is also top priority of the government and the state government, central government. So India is expected to emerge as the third largest consumer market just behind United States and China. The World Economic Forum said in a report titled Future of Consumption in Fast Growth Consumer Market in India. One week back this report has come. The success of the government policies is further reaffirmed when international organizations of great repute such as the World Bank and the IMF applaud India's resilient and stable growth and term India as the fastest growing emerging economy in the world. Gopin, Geeta Gopinath, the Chief Economist of International Monetary Fund, in an interview to Economic Times the other day, said, I quote, India remains one of the fastest growing large economies of the world and it is one of the few countries for which our estimates actually point to increase in the growth rate for 2019. This is ample indication of the growth that is taking place in the country. The World Bank in its latest forecast has said that India will continue to be the fastest growing major economy in the world. It said that GDP is expected to grow at 7.3% this fiscal year and 7.5% next following two years. And according to the World Economic Situation Prospects, WESP, India will continue to remain the world's fastest growing large economy in 2019 as well as 2020, much ahead of China, according to recent World Economic Situation Prospects 2019 report of the United Nations. It is also said the GDP is expected to accelerate to 7.6% in 2019 and 20. 2018 was replete with external vulnerabilities. Oil prices were on the rise. Economies were veering towards protectionism and trade wars were brewing between major global trading partners. Yet, India managed to maintain its steady course. One of the reasons for this stability was the robustness of India's institutions. Being a vibrant, functioning democracy, for the last 70 years, we are the largest parliamentary democracy in the world. India has the advantage of an institutional structure whose rights run deep, wide. So, doing business in India has now become much cheaper and faster through GST and other tax reforms and through digital process single point interface and single window clearance. Moody's, the renowned sovereign rating agency, lauded reforms such as goods and service tax and de demonetization for their potential to reduce informality in the economy. The leverage of information technology through mission mode projects like Digital India has simplified many complicated multi layered procedures. As a result, India has recorded a jump of 23 positions and placed now at 77th rank among world 
190 countries assessed by the World Bank and the Prime Minister said he want to bring it to 50. That is the target of the Government of India. India is among top three countries wherein the trust of the Government remains high. See the yesterday's newspapers. Edelman Trust Barometer Global Report for 2019 released at Davos day before yesterday has said the trust in institutions in India rose by 4 points to 72. Dear delegates, it's a matter of great satisfaction that many of the global corporate chains, some of whom are present here today, are now actively looking for investment opportunities in India with renewed optimism and enthusiasm encouraged by India's vast market of more than a billion consumers, increasing purchasing power, <coughs> rapidly unfolding technology, scenario and cheaper labor market with great trust on building industrial corridors, smart cities and housing for all, the government aims to assure holistic development of the nation. The corridors would promote integrated development and create an enabling atmosphere for industrial development, thus taking full advantage of the possibilities of industrial revolution 4.0. Backed by strong democracy and partnership, India is all set to become one of the top three economies of the world in the coming 10 years. A major threat. I want to tell one or two important things, though may not be connected directly with this. One is a major threat to world economy is the rising inequality in the entire world, which is not good for the world. We must try to bring down the inequalities, economic inequalities, regional inequalities, social inequalities, all policies of all governments across the world, across the globe, must aim to reduce inequalities. Indian government, Indian states are moving in that direction. The second thing is, the World Economic Forum said, inequality is getting so bad that it is threatening the very foundation of economic growth. That is what the report says. The, this worries policy makers everywhere for good reason. Research at the IMF and elsewhere makes it clear, persistent lack of inclusion defined as broadly shared benefits and opportunities for economic growth can fray social cohesion and undermine the sustainability of growth itself. So there is every need to bridge this. The second, the entire world, the Sustainable Development Goals 2030 also emphasizes the need for nations to focus more on equitable economic growth and to reduce inequalities and reach out to those populations who have been left out of the developmental process. That's why Indian government says, Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas. Assisted to everyone, development of each individual, that is the policy. Adopting the policy of Antyodaya, uplifting the poorest of the poor, taking care of the last man, last man not here in the auditorium, but in the society. That is the, that, that should be the approach of every country. The second one, the threat to the world order is terror. Terror is increasing. Terror has no religion. Unfortunately, some people are linking religion with terror. No religion approves terror. But terrorists are trying to misuse religion. The world must be active, come together to put an end to this terrorism through united efforts. That is the second challenge. The third challenge is environmental degradation. You are all seeing what is happening to the world community. We have prayed with the nature and nature is praying with us. So we have to go back to our nature. That's why I say love and live with the nature. Nature, culture together for a better future. That should be our approach of all people. Nature, culture together for a better future. We must take care of the nature so that the climate change can be taken care. I am happy that the Prime Minister along with the French leaders have taken initiative for the Solar Alliance and country after country is joining the Solar Alliance. That is also a good thing. This is another one. And the third one is about the black money. Is also a menace for the economic order of the world community. So all countries must come together, understand each other's problems and exchange information about the black money that is hold up in their countries through other accounts. The information should be shared. And thirdly, some people loot here, cheat here and run away to other country. Do cheating there and come back here to this country. There must be extradition treaty between all the countries to take care of such people. Businessmen, by and large, they try to be honest. But there are some black sheep. Because of them, the entire business community is getting bad name. 
So the industry, the business community must also see to it that ethics are maintained, values are maintained, so that there is social order and there is receptivity among the world nations. These are some of the challenges that are there. These are not confined to this country or that country. Our Prime Minister Modi and the country and parliament, we have taken a lot of measures. Lot of uh, registrations also have been taken up. The Prime Minister has taken a scheme called Jana Dana Yojana. 36 crore people have opened bank account. 36 crore people in India. It's not an ordinary thing. I think nowhere in the world 36 crore bank accounts are there. Common men also are getting bank accounts. Sobhagya, Udzwala, every poor woman is given LPG connection for cooking gas. These such are measures which will really take care of the inclusive growth. So we must all think in terms of an equitable economic growth. Our ultimate goal should be to achieve long lasting development. The efficient functioning of any economy depends upon efficient dispute settlements and time bound contract enforcement. I am glad alternative dispute resolution mechanism and tribunals are being strengthened. My dear brothers and sisters, Tamil Nadu is supremely rich in cultural heritage. You visit Tamil Nadu, you see the temples, you see the architecture, you see the beauty of the countryside, you will find amazing and you will be mesmerized. The Tamil Nadu is one of the oldest civilizations of the world. Tamil Nadu has been home to great kings, talented writers, gifted poets and prolific builders. Much has been said and written about the Tamil people's illustrious entrepreneurship and creativity. It's a place that is to, that is close to my heart also as well. I'm very happy that Tamil Nadu is one of the best performing states in India and has emerged as one of the most sought after investment destinations. I'm glad to know that this global investors meet and attracted more than three lakhs plus substantial investments in manufacturing infrastructure and services. It's worth noting that the Niti Aayog Earlier Planning Commission has ranked Tamil Nadu as one of the front runners in India on many socio-economic parameters. That is really laudable. Tamil Nadu has emerged as a leader in the manufacture of automobiles, components, electronic hardware, textiles, leather products and renewable energy apart from software development and IT enabled services. It has also become the third largest exporting state in India third largest exporting state. I extend hearty congratulations to the people of Tamil Nadu and the government of Tamil Nadu for the dedication and hard work. India being a federal polity, center and states must work together so that the momentum of this growth can be taken forward. We also need to create a more peaceful world and that is the foundation of a prosperous world. If you have tension, you cannot have attention. Peace is the prerequisite for progress. So keeping that in mind, we should have a harmonious relationship and I would urge each one of you to focus on challenging greater investments and launch innovative projects and practice that can address the livelihood concerns of our large farming community. I hope you will strive to build during this event as a later, later also meaningful, mutually beneficial, long lasting relationship founded on trust and friendship. As our Prime Minister often said, India is now ready for business as never before. I welcome each and every one of you to seize this moment and invest in India and invest in Tamil Nadu in particular. I am sure it will be truly rewarding for you as well as for us. Sahaviryam Karavava Hai. Let us grow together as the ancient Indian sages have said and transform the lives of the people for the better. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Jai Hind. Nandri Vanakkam. Thank you so much, sir, for that very, very inspiring speech.